Hello, I'm Kim, this is Jared. Uh, we're from the development team at the University of Auckland Library. I'm going to try and rush through the slides a little bit so that we can spend more time on the demos and hoping we can actually squeeze a second one in. So, you can be warned, are you clear? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, all right, well, we want to show you a project we've been doing at the library to try and search everything from one box on the front of the home page. At the moment, we've got a sort of discovery layer. Uh, we've got a primo discovery layer over our library catalog. Um, and it searches some things, but it does not search everything. And we're sick of our staff and students having to go to many different places uh, to find library resources. So our project's called the Discovery Zone. And it's not a complete discovery layer. It really is more of a uh, search box that will lead users to other places. Um, I, in, in, the, in the spirit of the, the challenge example, it's one box to rule the wall. Hashtag our 2018 Donald. Yeah. Um, and uh, it actually promotes the backend services and data providers that we get search results from as well. One of the reasons the library can do a project like this is that we have a UX designer who's able to make lots of amazing interfaces and workflows and sort of user-focused services for us. Um, so we're able to come up with uh, nice looking collections and, and pages and services like this. Whereas before, I don't know if you remember, the Dev Challenge in Austin, but this is what happens when programmers try to make. Jared, come on. So this, um, the framework we used for the Discovery Zone initially came out of the Team of Radio project, which was our first project that used Node.js. Uh, so basically the core of the Team of Radio project was extracted out and became UAV. It's basically just a common set of patterns that we can share between all the development teams so they know how things are put together and uh, any member of the team can pick something up and work on it. Um, your Angle app was basically, it's got a template in, which is done by handlebars. It also handles compression um, of client side JavaScript and CSS. But also allows for shared modules, so we can pull NPM modules that have repeat patterns like CSS and JavaScript and pull them into other projects. It also provides us with uh, login metrics. Um, so the discovery zone itself is built on a microservice that provides the search features and there's a base provider and then all the other providers sort of inherit from that. So <coughs> generally we split them into solar based providers and then primo based providers. And the, the point of them is that they return sets in a sort of common sort format, but also that we can reuse those providers on other websites that we need to. Uh, yeah, so one challenge that we found early on trying to federate so many different data sources is that they return search results uh, at very different times, particularly those big, funky discovery layers like Primo. Um, and it's a challenge we're still working on because we don't like waiting for search results, but we want to see everything at once too. We don't want to see things popping in as they're ready um, asynchronously <coughs> just from a user experience point of view. So we're still trying to find a proper medium uh, to that. Um, we've also found challenges with opaque relevancy ranking um, or index configuration of various data providers. And um, I think Laura sort of alluded to this in the keynote as well um, with trying to figure out how Google ranks things. Um, because we want to return things in the same order and in the same context as the backend provider that someone will end up at, uh, we're having to do a little bit of reverse engineering and try to figure out how these commercial systems uh, rank their search results. Uh, presentation of various content types or uh, various search results in different contexts is another challenge. Luckily not one for us, it's again what our UX person does for us. Um, and as well as challenges, we've managed to come up with some quick wins as well. Um, just really simple things that, that don't need a lot of uh, complicated work. So we've made a spreadsheet, basically, full of 
links and keywords that we know people type into our search box when they're just actually looking for other services that the university provides, or Google Scholar, or how do I check my email, or how do I enroll online. Um, I may be able to show you that now. Um, yeah. I, think, I think email is the most common search we get, more common than any article or book title. This is a little slow because it's running in a VM on my machine and uh, sorry, no, running on my machine and then going back to New Zealand and then up to Singapore for a few of these things. Um, <coughs> so if, if you ask a question or type a keyword, uh, you'll get a link to the thing you're looking for before you have to go digging into uh, you know Google search results or something like that. How am I doing for time, please? Another one we've got is contextual boosting of certain search terms. There are some things that people will search for. Um, if someone searches for a course code, it's very easy for us to detect. And we know that when someone's searching for a course code, they're usually looking for an exam paper. So we've been able to uh, bring those up to the top. Again, you don't have to scroll down, you don't have to wait through lots of other things that might mention that course code uh, for what they're looking for. Uh, because of the way that Jared really has designed and built um, the whole framework, it's really quick to start doing things, and so we're also able to prototype ideas as soon as anybody um, gives us an idea, and that's, that's really helped with kind of the continuous development, testing ideas. Um, <coughs> Improving existing ideas. And on that note, I hope um, I think we're going to have time for two demos today. We've got plenty of time. Uh, good. So we're going to we're going to create a new search provider based on um, what I've done is chuck the project Gumbu catalog into a solar index, and we're going to show you. Uh, if that was a new data source at the library that we had, uh, this is what we're going to do to create a new search provider in our um, microservice framework. And what we do to template that and uh, include it in the search results. So Derek's going to do this and I'm going to narrate. Right, so we've got directory based providers here that get uh, recursively parsed at runtime. And we've made some code templates in our IDE so that we can just really quickly make providers for various things. This one's going to give us the basics to generate solid queries, parse the results, and uh, render a template. Does that look good? Good. That's the logic done, basically. Um, now we'll make a handlebars template to include the search results. This is also very generic. Um, we have a bit of attribute our source.
and it's taking a while because the slowest thing slows us down. Right. So uh, yeah, there we go. So that's all there was to it. Um, we've got a whole new search source in there now. Um, we can link back to the full text, we can display metadata however we want. Um, we'll keep the search back on the, back on the back end. Good. Uh, I'm just going to try one more because I think we've got time. Because um, I was earlier in the week, I was tweeting out wondering what demo data sets uh, I might be able to play with today. And um, I thought, well, I wonder if anyone's archiving the OR 2016 tweets. And Amy Nisa from University of Michigan helpfully, like, instantly started archiving them when I mentioned that, and then sent me a nice spreadsheet full of structured um, Twitter data. I don't know if she's here. But uh, yeah, thanks to her anyway, because uh, I think we're going to be able to show that as well. <coughs> I'm not giving anyone motion sickness with my scrolling. I've been told I do that sometimes. Five minutes left, so I'm going to um, I'm going to drag one that I 
was working on this afternoon. Let me see if I can get that. Probably spell a few other things wrong. Thank you. 